a show about EVE Online, a spaceship game. If you're watching us live on Twitch TV, we have a podcast version on TalkingInStations.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We also have a YouTube hub with videos on demand at youtube.com slash TalkingInStations, all one word. Today we have episode 220. I'm your host, Carneros from The Bastion, and I'm joined by three hosts and 60p guests. So let's say hello so the podcast listeners can each hear your voice. Matterall and Elise had the day off today. So I've got some help today from, first of all, we'll go to Fansui from Eve Scout Cartel. Good morning, everyone. Good to be here today. Good morning, indeed. And we have our producer, January Valentine. Hi, everyone. Happy time zone. Yay, happy time zone. Amen. And we have McLeod from The Graduates in the Initiative. Welcome, McLeod, as always. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about the Triglavian invasion and not just phase three, kind of overall, this is a, this is a good discussion for beginners and uh, intermediate players all combined. Uh, excited to hear you guys uh, meet our CCP guests for this. Let's start first with, uh, you can't see the, maybe you, you can see the image. If you're watching in Twitch, you can see the image. He's way out in the Icelandic countryside here. CCP Burger. Hey guys, great to be with you. Thanks oh. for joining us. That's crazy. That's if you're looking at the camera, that's him down in the bottom right uh, out in the countryside of Iceland. <laughs> we we, yeah, we have actually in Oh, sorry, go for it, Dave. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm actually in the deep south. Yeah, I'm actually in the deep southeast of Iceland. Uh, close by a, a Viking wind. So it's a little choppy, but super excited to be here. Looking for Triclavians. Oh, wow. Good luck. And then we just had got hot dropped. That is CCP Goodfella, if I'm not mistaken. Say hello. Goodfella? His voice has not come in through yet. I uh... uh Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, there you are. Thank you for having me. Yes, welcome. Uh, my compliments on your uh, uh, quarantine beard. That's yes, yes. I, I am uh, going soon to the barber. It, uh, not yet, though. Nice, nice. And then let, me, let us introduce you to CCP Coyote. Good morning, everyone. Uh, excited to get into all this. Good morning, indeed. And then we have one more guest. Yes, this is fantastic. CCP Sledgehammer, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm pretty excited to talk about the invasion with all of you. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Sorry, I... at the moment. Just, I'm just, uh, you know, for the v for the viewers out there, I'm just uh, going to be sorting out cameras and stuff like that right now. Um, yeah. You know, let's move swiftly on. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Sledgehammer and Coyote are the developers behind the Triglavian invasion. Which is excited and bravo. Thank you very much. I got to experience some of that this week. And... Uh, and it's actually more a mystery in my head still, but I got to at least see and taste it a bit. Um, I'm excited to hear more. At CCP Burger, I feel bad about you standing out in the cold. Um, what's on your mind right now as we, as we get started? What do you want the players to be knowing and thinking about uh, in, in terms of the Triglavians? Is this, a, is this a big deal? Should we be worried? I mean, it all depends on how you guys uh, deal with this this new threat to New Eden. Um, I guess it's not necessarily a new threat, but it's uh, it's kind of a new chapter and new evolution in this in the Triglavian threat. Um, so I'm really excited to see how you will deal with it. And and I guess you got the first taste uh, this week, um, and you know things started out slowly but escalated quite quickly and and uh, i i managed to witness an interesting uh uh transition uh thursday thursday night so 
So I'm I'm really excited to see how you guys um, will 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 work with or fight against uh, the Triglavians. Does that mean you were in the Empire system of Rara Vos when it uh, on Thursday night? Is that what you're saying? I can neither confirm nor deny that statement. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm told that was the first system that the Triglavians got a real foothold in. Is that is that true? Or the most progressed foothold? The, well, the only one. Yeah, I mean, they at least managed to uh, they managed to uh, progress their foothold there. Definitely, I wouldn't say that uh, they they have. Uh, yeah, they've definitely progressed their 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 um, presence in that system. But part of this this uh, this you know this is the start of the final chapter of the Triglavian uh, storyline. And what we wanted to like everything we do, we all, we're constantly pushing the boundaries and pushing the envelope on what we do. And we definitely wanted to set the content up in such a way that it would be both we would we would take in more player interaction and and allow players to progress the storyline and basically decide how it will kind of resolve. But we also wanted to make sure that you know, in the past, oftentimes we've done everything on day one and then kind of people are done with the content on day five. But this time around, we definitely wanted to kind of allow the storyline to progress throughout the. Uh, throughout the uh, next couple of next few months. There there was a an item that they warped us to in the system and we all took a, a look at it. Uh, we I went into fleet last night to an autobus and we, none of us knew what we were doing, had any idea what but and it's pandemonium in there. People are warping left and right, shooting Things all over the place. We just shot other players because we didn't we didn't know what's going on. We don't understand. We're we're afraid to uh, mess up our setting our standings with any particular group. Turns out later that was probably a bad fear. But they worked us to this object next to the sun, and it was a special array that we'd seen in the videos. Um, and it was it, uh, it you know I couldn't tell how big or small it was, even as I got my ship up next to it. And it had a lasery thing pointing through the middle at the blue sun. And it was doing something to the sun, and it was probably not good. Uh, but we're watch we, we worked in and looked at it, and, and then we all warped out before anything could eat us. Um, is that the thing that makes this system be the most advanced toward the Triglavian side? What is that thing? Well, it's it's definitely like you know, part of part of establishing a foothold. Uh, you know, you need some infrastructure to to make sure that uh, you know the foothold is is secure, and uh, you know, a lot of when you know commu communities are built, usually they are built around you know a certain resource or or, or you know certain commodity. So it wouldn't surprise me if if there is a research or commodity that, that the Triglavians are looking for, um, and maybe this structure is, has something to do with that. Jan? Or 10 or seven and a half. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have my second oldest pull that pull them up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your poker faces would be better if you had a triglavian mask like Zornia. Yeah, I've been hiking now for, you know, a couple of hours and I haven't found any triglavians here. I found a few reindeers, but uh I'm kind of kind of sad that I'm not running into triglavians in this isolated place that I'm in. So this content is is very interesting for someone uh, who's mostly in kind of a nullsec player. I've noticed that it's not it's not an incursion. It's not faction warfare. Uh, my question for you, uh, CCP Burger, is: What is your vision for this content? How did you want to see players interact with this? 
Well, I've um, I've always been really interested in the fact that a lot of uh, majority of sessions in Eve are actually either like I run solo and PVE. Um, and when I joined the Eve team many years back, um, one of the one of the uh, kind of issues I had was that you know you had this wonderful and super interesting game. Um, and then you had all this PVE content and mission content that kind of sat on the side and didn't really push, um, didn't really push the progression of the storyline or, or of the kind of didn't really push the yeah the 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 narrative of the of the universe. Um, so since I joined um, the Eve team, um, we've been you know I've been involved with a lot of projects that have kind of pushed content. Uh, closer to kind of the the core of the game, um, and we started, you know that that's you know we started kind of fairly open and and you know loose with uh, the initial drifters, and then went into mining operations and forward operating bases and shipyards. And the idea, uh, this is a, this is a the next step in that evolution. Th this content where we're kind of bringing content closer to you know the core of of e online so that's kind of from a very technical and production boring boring smoring out of floor uh um point of view but in game it's it's uh you know there's a really exciting off you know we're it's super interesting to to introduce a new race and and see if they manage to to actually get a foothold in new eden um and what does that mean like you know, Thursday we saw, you know, we saw the security of the system drop. That's never happened in Eve before. What does it mean? What does a, what does a low sec system in high sec? What does like what happens? What happens? Yeah. <laughs> so there is also, you know, we're trying to learn as much as we can um, from this, and we're trying to push the boundaries and push Eve. And you know, we're turning, we just turned seventeen, and and we're just at the start of you know our life cycle and and we're you know it's not only for the third decade it's for the fourth fifth and sixth and and i think uh this is definitely like this is setting ourselves we're setting ourselves up for a super interesting future where where you know your interaction with players or engine will shape the will shape the future of eve well, I have to say you guys are doing a great job because I've been I've been literally on the edge of my seat just kind of watching all of this unfold. So I'm I'm here with you. And and to jump awesome. in there, I mean, uh it has been fantastic to watch the the engagement and excitement from the community, all the all the different theories, uh, all the different like streams and content on YouTube, and uh, I feel like uh, I, you know maybe uh, you guys disagree, but I think like the excitement around the third chapter has definitely been the most out of all the all the uh, three chapters uh, of the invasion, uh, like. Uh, I've never seen uh, Twitter and Reddit so buzzing on the invasion until now, and it's clear that this is the the finale. Uh, so for Burger and Goodfella, from from the perspective of managing this content piece being developed, you know this this is content. Uh, the likes of which have never existed before in EVE Online. Uh, it can leave an impact on the universe, you know, in a way that no other content before has. Players are engaging with this in a way, you know, no, nobody's asked me about ISK per hour since Chapter 3 started, and I can't tell you how refreshing that is, because they're showing up hundreds at a time and not caring about that. So I would, I would like to know what what you guys can tell us about what you're taking away from invasions that you can bring to future content. Well, I, I'm, I'm super happy that, that uh, people are not asking you about is per hours around this content. Um, that means that, uh, you know, the content is, is, is more meaningful and, and, you know, knowing that you can shape uh, the progression of the universe. Um, it, I mean, that, that's huge. Uh, for me, I'm I'm of course interested in in a lot of tiny details. I'm personally I'm very interested in you know how this 
can actually serve as a catalyst for content going forward. Um, I mean, we're 17. We've uh, a lot of our content has been developed with different content tools and, and you know, doesn't necessarily talk nice together. So in this kind of very long um, um, process of, of getting to, you know, an invasion type content, I mean, obviously that space is an incredibly important step in this journey. Um, I'm hoping that this can serve as a blueprint for content going forward. And, you know, where people can, where we can, allow people to work with uh, or for the empire you know what if you could actually be you know a general in in you know a plot reader army or or you know for the Kaltar state um and you know th this is of course kind of you know blue sky blue sky thinking but this is a super important step towards a future like that where you know your actions have a ripple effect both through the player community and the npc uh, community. And so, 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 sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to say that, uh, I mean, f what we've been to, uh, talking about the invasion, uh, we have been giving the reports from the New Eden universe that uh, players will have to choose the sites and, um, and New Eden will not be the same after the invasion has concluded. Uh, I, I know a lot of players have been thinking maybe it's just too too marketing or you know we're, we're over hyping or or anything like that uh but uh i think nobody can really argue that that is a fact after they've started to see the uh, invasion chapter three uh roll out so uh, what the future brings um we genuinely don't know because the players will have an impact on how the invasion uh, will roll out and i'm not trying to be funny or spooky or anything it's just a, a matter of fact and that's so, actually so... super exciting to not not really know it's it's uh you know it makes it makes our job definitely harder but you know we're ccp we like we like to take the harder route <laughs> So Sledgehammer and Coyote are well on their way to their swords. You're not you're not trying not doing this thing because it's easy, but because it's hard. And uh, it's yeah. interesting and exciting, yeah. And 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 also uh, the just like in in various other places that have uh, storyline started and and not necessarily ended, but but this is a storyline that has had a, a long time coming, and I think just one of my favorite moments out of all these innovation things uh, was the stream the other day with uh, CCP Burger, CCP Convict, CCP Coyote. Uh, joined by some of the lore experts from the community, and of course CCP Delegate Zero as well. For me, it was just a like I was a fan watching uh, these just great minds discuss uh, the lore and the story uh, so far in the innovation. It, it has been just been this is the stuff that has just has been so much fun to to watch. I'll have to say for all of the different things that you have to balance to bring this story into fruition and make sure that it works and it, it gels well with the game player or the player base at large. It's amazing. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, we were ooing and eyeing at the visuals last night as we were going through places too. You know, just uh, guys, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I mean it's amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's we're we're super lucky having. I mean, our art team is, I mean, they're amazing. Like I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm at awe all the time with with the work that they do, and you know, I'm lucky to work with them every day. So it's 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 I'm pretty privileged being able to like see all the stuff behind the scenes, and then you know, coming out in the into the game. Yeah, I'm often oftentimes kind of baffled by by the amazing uh yeah uh, there also just worth mentioning uh, this all started in 
uh, Abyssal Dead Space in 2018 and Abyssal Dead Space has sort of been uh, allowing us, uh, us to develop this universe even, even more and deeper and you're seeing these stunning visuals that are being pushed by the art team uh, now in known space because of this development over a long, long period of time uh, which I just think is so much fun to come to see uh, come to, uh, like bring into life uh, yeah so uh, I think what's well, actually go ahead. I, I I'm sorry, Godfella. <laughs> what, no. What's actually so uh, interesting here is that, like he say, like Godfella saying, is that, and what I was talking about earlier is that every everything we do, we try to learn as much as we can from it, and we try to we try to push the boundaries with everything, all the all the little small things that we're doing, um, you know, being kind of the the two week cadence releases or or this big content releases this allows us to push the boundaries a little bit further test out new things like a piece of that space allowed us to test out you know global uh global quote-unquote weather effects and, and visual effects that took over whole systems that we could then you know start to test out in in live events and and then uh, the invasions and this has allowed us to to probably make the biggest leaps forward in both the visual storytelling you know, we've done a lot of push in, in game design through these tests, and uh, and I think uh, uh, one of the great things that that has been, we've been pushing really hard also over the last three or four years is closing the gap between art and game design. And I think the the invasion has shown that, like, you know, when you get art and game designers kind of jiving and gelling really well, you get such amazing work. And and that summer and Cody are, you know definitely also deserve a lot of credit for for the awesome work they did yeah uh 100 agree uh but uh i mean Berger and i have been on 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 talk shows before and talking about this and and i mean him could probably go on for hours to talk about this but i personally like Berger and i are both in the middle of the countryside right now and as a fan of the invasion i would just uh love uh to uh like roast coyote and and uh, sledgehammer with some uh, questions now and and just allow me to to watch as a as a fan and and Berker as well. Uh, so if, yeah, if anybody has questions for them, uh, take it away and, and and let me enjoy the stream. Yeah, I might <laughs> actually jump off the stream right now because my hands are freezing off me and it's starting to rain. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I, I want to say one thing last. There was a question from the audience if this is the new standard for content. Uh, I mean, uh, we are always learning, trying out new things, uh, this this rapid iterations and and starting off a storyline, which is not just a storyline, but a, uh, something that is happening in a living, breathing universe that the players can both experience and have an impact on uh, that is the way going forward uh, i think it's 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 a challenging job but it's a it's an extremely entertaining uh, project for everybody so uh, yeah and it's maybe not a new standard but but i mean it, it sets the standard but this is definitely you know the new blueprint uh, that we want to work, yeah. work after and so you know we might you know content will be of different scales but but we're building this new blue this new playbook uh, basically that's a good way of saying it but thank you everybody for the good questions and i, I look forward to to watching <laughs> oh. um, i'll catch you guys soon <laughs> yep feel free to jump off camera and everything that's all good thank you yeah. very much Bobby. thank you yeah thank thanks you thanks thank for you. being here we thank appreciate you. your vision and guidance of this content so uh we're going to take the opportunity now to talk to Sledgehammer and Coyote, who have been hard at work building this stuff for us. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your first major content project uh, as CCP game designers. So uh, I think that we would very much like to hear the story of, you know, building this content from scratch, you know, coming up with the concepts, things that may never have been done before, what you learned along the way as you went from chapter to chapter, you know, how you iterated and improved and, you know, took feedback, the methodology, you know, just the, the overall experience. Cause I don't think that the players have gotten to hear this particular story yet. And now that chapter three is reaching a crescendo slowly, uh, I think this is a good time for people to hear about how this came about. Sure. Uh, 
I guess I could start about the talk about the beginnings of all of this. Um, we had Coyote and myself worked on a, a live event, a couple of live events before we were asked if we'd like to take telling the Triglavian story on board. Uh, they weren't good live events. So I, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to admit they were uh, <laughs> they were messy. But you know, we every, every, every story has a start, so let's start there. Um, they weren't great. Um, but getting asked to do the Triglavian invasion gave us time and, and the space to sort of really figure out what our goals as designers were, um, how we would go about tackling bringing the Triglavians into New Eden. Uh, the first thing that we looked towards really was the incursions. It's, it uses a system that allows us to uh, distribute content over a timeline. It's a, it's a scheduling system. so. Everything that you see now uh, is is an evolution of our exploration into using that as a, as a basis. Uh, obviously, for our purposes, the the incursion system didn't quite fit, so we had to do an exploration into how we want to alter that and how we want to meet the design goals of causing some disruption in high sec, because that's really the the first design goal that we set out to achieve that that Burger gave us. Um, Go on. I was just going to say, uh, not just Burger, but um, also Muppet Hunter. Um, when they sat down with us and, and kind of pulled us aside, there were there were a couple pillars that they really wanted us to hit, and one of them was, uh, you know, they they wanted to make sure that uh, we were uh, shaking things up, that we were creating some disruptions in various parts of the the universe, and we we had a lot of conversations um, and throughout the entire year and a half long process of what it meant to be good disruptions. Um, and I think, you know, we're still kind of figuring that out. Um, uh, the other, the other really big one was making sure that we told a full story arc that we didn't, um, leave anything hanging at the end of all that, uh, which, uh, is something that, you know, when we, as soon as part one went out, uh, you know, the players responded very heavily of like, we're not sure that this is going to end. So we, you know, we very much needed to make sure that that was going to come to a head. So, someone's watched a lot of sci-fi TV and been left hanging like the rest of us. <laughs> I mean, Firefly never had a movie afterwards, so I'm really sad. <laughs> You're allowed to be wrong on, on, on that, but that's okay. I, I like Serenity. Um, so yeah, we, we came out with the, just you know, we, sta we started, we, we had a month of rolling out the first invasion content that culminated in the world arcs appearing. Um, we ran that for, you know, like three months or so over the summer, uh, before we started dripping in other pieces of content here and there. So this is where we started exploring with, uh, truly exploring with weather and weather that players could affect. This is, uh, the stellar observatories. So, you know, that's the, that's the first part of like player agency that we kind of dropped on everyone that could truly be affected rather than just running through content, something that left a permanent mark on, on the universe. You know, it's not, it, albeit it might be instanced in a dungeon, but that structure will persist until somebody blows it up. Um, so we were exploring what effects we could give to these structures to you know, make people have a choice. Like, okay, your warp might be 30% slower in the system, but if you're mining, you're going to get a really nice bonus from it. Maybe that's a trade-off that you want to make. Um, and there's, you know, obviously so many ways to affect uh, the hundreds of attributes that a player's ship might have. Uh, but the, it's still very much a black slate with what we could do with, with that aspect of the invasions. When did the idea of changing the security status of the system come in because that is something that's very very unique and yeah. uh, i i go ahead we've been talking about it since we got, got asked how we would if we'd like to do the invasions <laughs> one, of, one of the things that i think uh sledgeham and, and i really bonded over starting the entire invasion content was we both came to the table with independently like i want to change sex status um and uh, it turns out that we had both had this as like a personal desired push to like have somehow an Eve. Um, and yeah, so so it started off uh, 
February of last year, probably. Um, and uh, it was through a lot of conversations with uh, our engineers about what that meant um, behind the scenes with uh, each other and all the game designers about all of the tons of tiny pieces that that impacts to uh, kind of come down to uh, where we are right now, which is kind of a, a softly touching on it to figure out what this does to see whether it's uh, something we want to delve deeper into or whether this is exactly where we want or if it's too much even where it is. It's also it's also the biggest example of I, I personally feel what people differentiate between the different security statuses. It's not about the PI that you get. It's not about the different minimal distributions. It's about the fact that you could probably get ganked on the gate without any awkward response, right? So yeah, we've limited to that because it's it's also cleaner. Um, you know, we were just saying that the Concord response times have changed. It's not that the it's not the security of the states has been reclassified. So we can't lie to covert sign note, for example. Exactly. So let's. I, I want to double down on on something I mentioned earlier, which is that we we saw a clear process of learning and iteration from chapter to chapter as you guys built this. So can you talk about something? that you learned in a in one chapter that you then changed or employed you know in in a later chapter something that you know really bothered you and that you made significantly better i don't know if, which one of us wants to take this first uh, i'll take it um from my own point of view i think we failed on giving an on-ramp to newer players and making this accessible like it's, it was a weird dichotomy where we wanted to give everyone a, a challenging MP, uh, PVE experience, but the Triglavians are such that they're actually very powerful like entities to fight. We don't want to change the paradigm too much from what you would encounter in Abyssal Dead Space. We want to like foster the idea that the Triglavians are spilling over into New Eden at large. Um, so that by that nature, we had to keep them roughly comparable to the power levels that you'd see there and try and come up with uh, accessible content as well as challenging content. So I think the introduction of the emerging conduits and the the uh, roaming fleets in those systems is, a, is an example of what I took away from the difficulty curve that I'd initially set in, the, the ch in chapter one. Yeah, I um, one of the other things that we have really talked about is uh, how to space content out. Um, so, you know, chapter one came out and we had a bunch of pieces that were spaced not too far apart from each other. Uh, and it, it seems to work. Uh, and we then went, you know, okay, cool. So this dripping of content can work. And then with chapter two, uh, we dripped stuff out and it was so, uh, spaced apart that I don't think, uh, it, it didn't really have any impact in the way that we'd really hoped it would. Um, and so that's you know kind of why you saw us pull back, why we didn't release anything uh, all all year until now. Uh, just kind of getting everything together into uh, fewer, or rather into one uh, bigger release that we could just go boom, here you go, here's the impact. Um, and that seems to really have worked, uh, you know, at least so far. <laughs> So when when did your your vision for the you know the arc that completes at the end of chapter three really solidify and come into place? And you're like, all right, this is this is what we're gonna do, and the broad strokes are pretty much defined. Uh, the arc that comes in at the end of chapter three. Yeah, like when, when did, yeah. When when oh, did you sorry. figure out? Yeah, when did you figure out where where we were gonna end up? When did you know? I think we had inklings of where we were going to go um, after the sort of after the dust had settled around the conclusion of chapter two, which was the the dreadnought dungeon. We definitely started the conversations off uh, before everyone broke for Christmas. Uh, I think I think we knew in our heads. Pers I, I personally, well, no, I think it can speak for both of us, and we knew that where we wanted to go by like the begin the sort of middle of January, we knew what this should look like at the end, roughly, with all the details in between to be worked out, I think is fair to say. Yeah, I think at that point, you know, we had uh, toyed around 
in very small uh, pieces with a lot of the things uh, that uh, Sledgehammer and I both really wanted to, to uh, explore deeper. Um, we toyed around with what it meant to pick sides. We toyed around with you know, the uh, NPCs uh, dynamically deploying structures, uh, as we saw with the accelerators. Um, you know, we, uh, with the, the, the roaming NPCs that, you know, we, we really wanted to break stuff out of dungeons a little bit more. Um, and that, uh, that had kind of already, all these pieces, we had done initial tests by having small releases of it um, between chapter one and chapter two. And yes, by the end of, by the end of chapter two, we definitely um, had a, a long list of what we really wanted chapter three to look like. I think you touched on a really important point there as well, which is another thing that like we both from days like zero have agreed upon with, with all of this, which was giving life to systems, like making it feel as though the, the conflict is spread over and active in every point of the system rather than just in the, the sites that you might go to. And I know there's an element of that with the incursions as well, but with the invasions, we got the opportunity to iterate on like AI that we've built from the ground up more or less for this. And, you know, novel interactions and uh, behaviors that really sort of give life to the solar system where all of this is happening. Now, you just mentioned, though, picking sides. And uh, uh, we went into a system last night. We were worried going in if even just entering the system would mean we picked a side in some way. And does is that going to have ramifications for our standings? Or And, and then we're shooting other capsuleers because we're partly because we're afraid to shoot the NPCs because it will affect our standing yeah. with everyone. Um, and then we were afraid that, okay, are we shooting pro incom or are we show, shooting pro triglavians and is that going to matter? And what about our logi? Uh, explain to us what, can you remove some of the fear of getting started by explaining to us what the standings, how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So, like normally when people are running missions or doing like more standard, more common, more like older content, um, you incur standings, gains and losses. And that has like ripple on effects due to something called derived standings. So if you're fighting for the Galente, you're destroying, you know, Caldari ships. As a result of that, you're getting some favor with Mimitar because they're aligned with Galente, but you're also losing favor with Amar as a sort of, high level example of this. Um, we don't want to in any way block people from experiencing the content. Um, so removing, like containing the standings relationship for allowing people to change, uh, choose a side between the Triglavian Collective and this new faction Edencom uh, was, 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 you know, a requirement rather than a, a, a wish. It had to be this way because we don't want to tag people's standings for engaging with this content. Um, so rest assured that like Edencom was created basically for this purpose to contain the standings and contain the story between these two factions so that people don't have to worry about their greater standings within New Eden when they participate. But can you jump in and do pro Edencom stuff one day and then come back the next day and do pro Triglavian stuff? Absolutely. Is that even possible? Okay. Yeah, you, wow. you can, though there are some uh, difficulties that might eventually incur where uh, if your standings get too heavy with one, then ran any random uh, roaming group can land in and then you have more. Whereas if you do more actively choose one side over the other, then those uh, roaming groups, they might end up uh, helping you in the site. Um, they might end up repairing your uh, your ships. There's there's um, so uh, you can flip back and forth for a while, but after a while, uh, it's just going to be making it harder for you. So this new this um, three part expansion series it's not in it's not an incursion it's not faction warfare but it has heavy uh, elements heavily um, borrowed from both. Um, how do you see this going into the future now that all of this is is uh, almost done or, you know, it's out there, the player base seems to be overwhelmingly positive. Are you looking at other uh, longer 
or things that have been in the game longer and wondering how you can change that those in light of this absolutely um i can't speak to the future and anything that i say isn't a commitment to doing a thing but me and Kelly you talk about factional warfare a lot when we're talking about chapter three yeah mm. uh I think that a lot of kind of what we were saying before about how chapter one and two were kind of prototypes for chapter three, um, in a way, uh, everything we're doing with chapter three is, or in our minds at least, is prototypes for pieces that we would like to break out and use in other pe uh, parts of the game world. Um, I, you know, as Sledgehammer said, like we can't commit to what we are or are not doing because we don't even know at this point. Um, but we are constantly talking about things like, you know, okay, well, if we are able to do this with sex status, what else can we do with it? You know, how else could we have that feed into things? Or, you know, we now have NPCs that are fighting each other. We've solved, uh, not all, but a lot of the, uh, difficulties there. Um, how can we use that to make, uh, faction warfare or any other kind of, uh, interaction with multiple NPC groups more interesting and dynamic? Um, so, yes. <laughs> I think the standings exploration that we've done started to do with the, the observatory flashpoints and now basically gone all in on with chapter three is going to be very, very interesting. It's, it's existed largely as a content gating feature. You know, it, it, you need a certain amount of standings to do level four missions, right? Is, is the, the most common example of this, or at least the most, um, the most prevalent example of this. Uh, but with this, you know, a fleet will help you. Like, fleets, because of your previous actions, will now be absolutely aggressive towards you. So what direction can we take this in, and, and can we expand this to, like, you know, why, why can't we try and expand this to, like, every NPC in-space interaction that, that we have? So there's, th there's a few things that, that you've accomplished with this content that I think are notable and worth focusing on. Um, you've, you've changed the weather. This is not really some, like Abyss has weathers, uh, wormholes have weather. Those kind of stay the same. This changes, and this is very different than something that we've ever seen before. Uh, you've changed security status, which is obviously a gigantic, huge deal. Even, even if it is only the Concord response that has been modified, like this is unprecedented change. Uh, NPCs have behaved with regard to each other and to the players in uh, whole new ways that we have never seen before. They're smarter. They are more interactable. You know, remote effects. You know, both uh, you know positive and negative have you know are impactful. I mean, you just you just said yourself like these rats will rep you. Like that's like I just want these rats will rep you. Like this is a thing. So. How do you how do you feel about these particular accomplishments and and ways in which this might be used in the future? I'm incredibly uh, excited about all of this. Like uh, I I came to CCP uh, with this desire to uh, make the universe come more alive. Uh, it's something I feel really passionately about originally as a player and now as a dev um, that, you know, the universe is a living organism and it should be very clear to the player as such. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of uh, all the advancements we've made, even though there's more work to be done. Uh, you know, they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just really proud of where we've, uh, where we've gotten and excited about where we might take it. So you have players that are kind of, uh, they're not really engaging the content. They're just kind of, um, they're just seeing what happens. You know, they're just uh, viewers. What would you say to someone who is unsure of how to get in there and interact with this? It's a tricky question to answer in the sort of first weeks of this because we've seen so much uh, rushing towards all the systems and dogpiling, but at the same time, maybe that's the best approach to cut your teeth right now. Uh, everyone's super accept accepting, like pick a side, like choose that you're going to fight for the, the Triglavians and, and 
poke around and see if you can't find a fleet that will accept you. I know there was a fleet of 176 random people in in Raravos the other night just picking up anyone that said they would fight for the Triglavians and just telling them to go and shoot Edingon because there's so many people that skill doesn't really come into the equation at this point, uh, which isn't the worst problem to have. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, it's Abyssal Dead Space, T1s, T2s, and T3s were, were kind of like the sort of intro point for the accessibility for these. And I know that we have removed emerging conduits from across high sec um, at the moment, but you know, there's going to be opportunities for people as this unfolds because it isn't a short term affair. Um, and it isn't something that we're going to keep our hands off until we're happy with it. I've other pressures being considered, but yeah, uh, try T1 and T2 of Abyssal Dead Space and get a feel for how the Triglavian fight and then see if you can't find like the Triglavian Initiative or Malro or one of these groups to bring you under their wings. I mean, sometimes it's even easier than that. Like, uh, I know I was in Raravos at one point. I was uh, I was tailing Bjorn Bees fleet in actual fact. Like, just they were walking around, you know, taking on anything that uh, they could find. There was definitely a lot of people uh, in the invasion chat, which pops up when you get when you go into an invasion system. Um, and there are a lot of fleets that were essentially just uh, picking up people from there. Uh, essentially, you 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 find this chat, uh, this uh, particular chat room, um, which pops up, you know, when you go into it, any other systems. Well, I will essentially, say is you that just. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, no, on you go. Oh no, I was just going to say, and essentially, you you know, all you really do is you 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 know you act social, you act sociable in there. You, you know, you say that you're looking for a fleet and. Generally, you're kind of gobbled up by a by a fleet uh, in a good way, not in a bad way, by the way. I mean, M McLeod is just describing another piece of the friendship machine. I mean, yeah. you throw a bunch of players in together, give them, you know, let them choose a flag, and and watch them group up and 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 help each other out. It's it's really incredible to watch. Uh, and this this kind of digs into another general game design concept, like. So any any on ramps that CCP builds is great, like awesome. Make it as easy as possible to get into this content. But anything that is not built by the developers, they kind of leave open to the players, and that's just what Mac was describing. Like all he had to do is show up, and the players had handled the rest of that infrastructure. So it was easy enough for enough players to get into it that they then brought other players in, and that's like that's Eve Online in a nutshell. I mean, even even at that particular point, um, you know, I got talking to to convict at one point in in the chat room. So you know, all things all things can happen. And you know, it's a function of the, the the hype and the popularity of this first week of this being live. But it's arguably easier to get into now than it ever will be. You know, you have to expect that numbers are going to dwindle as the the hype fades. That's you'd be naive to think otherwise. But you know. There, there were 250 people in Ravos when I ch last checked, and they're still just picking up people left, right, and center to fight for the Triglavians. So, yeah, just show up, I guess. It seems to be what people need to do. So, Actually, what, yeah. what, people, what people are doing now is, so during the hype phase, the systems are being set up. You know, the organizations are being built, the players are coming together, and as the hype fades away, those organizations will now be built in there and ready to remain. People can go into system and tee up or E up and get a fleet invite, because that's what they're doing. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, leaving this freedom for the players to uh, uh, socialize, to create that, um, that net um, is... is a core component to what it means to design for Eve. Um, it's uh, something that I think is really different from any other uh, game that I ever have worked on and probably ever will work on. Uh, is that you know we're we're not trying to control every piece. We're trying to control enough that the players can do the rest. Um, and I, I think that's that's been something we have kind of really felt with the uh, emergent. Um, systems that we've built uh, to just kind of let it go out there and let the players do their thing. Um, 
And also for any of the players, as you mentioned, who are watching, who might be uh, too scared to take part, um, you don't have to go out into space and shoot things to be taking part. By simply watching, you are a part of the whole experience because there are people there that are performing for you. Um, which I think is a whole nother level of uh, beauty in this entire system we built. Sure. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions, like really specifically regarding how the development of this sort of thing is so uh, different in comparison to the development of, uh, say, story driven content in other games, because a lot of other uh, games you generally tend to have the story very much on rails, right? Whereas this kind of content, you know, you almost have to design it from a standpoint of uh, players can come at it in so many different angles that, like, I mean, have you experienced the on-rails uh, development um, and, like, how different is it? Uh, trying to develop the, the content for invasions compared to that. I actually can't speak to developing content other than the invasion. It was my first big gig, basically. Um, I was a QA for years before that. Uh, but yeah, this is my, my biggest feature, essentially. Uh, designing a game that's more on Rails, like it's it's a the biggest thing you have to do is switch the way you're telling stories and the way you're thinking about stories in your head. Um, because when like the on rails ones, it's kind of like just handing them a film uh, and writing that kind of story where there's just details of it. The players have control over. Um, but something like this, really what you're doing is you're, uh, you're not telling a story. Uh, like we, we are not telling a story. We are creating a system that the players can tell stories with. Uh, and that's a really important difference. You know, there are certain pieces of the arc that we are controlling. Uh, there are, you know, the, the different dungeons that go out when they go out, you know, kind of, there are pieces to it that sure we've got control over, but at the end of the day, the biggest difference is that we can't be thinking of it as our story. That's really, really cool way of looking at it for sure. Nice. So when, a, when a, if a new player hasn't touched this stuff, they're looking at the agency uh, window in the EVE client. They go to the Neocom, they go to activities, and they go to the, and they click on Treglavian Invasion, and they see this uh, this bewildering thing: final liminality, escalating liminality, liminality stellar reconnaissance. Where, where do they start? What do they do? Uh, where should they go? Or, or are you saying, just get in a destroyer, fit it with some salvagers, burn to the nearest system, and just sit and watch and make yourself a bowl of popcorn and salvage wrecks? Is that, was that a better start? That's a perfectly legitimate start, but as I say, there's enough people out there that are wanting to pick people up just to have the numbers and get people through this experience, get other people to experience what's happening for them, um, happening to them, that going to stellar uh, reconnaissance systems would be the, the, probably the best starting point for them. Yeah, I think that uh, kind of going back to the idea that we're not building all the infrastructure for the players, uh, you know, letting uh, whatever is most interesting to you, go and explore it and find people that will help you explore it. Um, because, you know, it's all well and good for us to say like, you know, ooh, like, the liminality ones, that's that's where the, the sec drops. Like, mm, maybe the new players don't want to go. They're like, But what if that's going to be the part that they find fun that keeps them in the game? Um, by all means, figure out what's most interesting to you. And there are currently tons of players willing to help you get into it. Okay, when you were designing this system, were you also thinking about the fact that um, no security space is out here and we're we're going to be affecting your ability to light sinos in between. So 
uh, was it was there a design intention with regard to jump freighter logistics between Empire Space and Null Security Space, or was this just something that a side effect? Uh, it's another example of the pillar of disruption that we've held close to our hearts since we started this whole thing. Um, yeah, it was a design intention yeah. of disruption. Yes. Yeah. One, one of the conversations we had at first was uh, disrupting trade. Uh, and after a lot of conversations internally, uh, we decided that if we were going to hit traders, the traders that we wanted to uh, try to disrupt um, first, uh, the, the folks in, in NullSec are the ones that have the most ability to react. Uh, you know, if we were just hitting the high seckers, there's a lot less. Um, it would have felt a little bit more like a cheap shot. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's best to say that we really wanted to affect logistics change rather than people who day trade at the weekend as their way of experience in evening. Yeah, yeah. The very good way of putting it. And what's your objective in hitting logistics change? And is it just general uh, disruption, or are we specifically trying to re uh, reduce the ability of null sec to e to get the ships they PVP in? I mean, you're going to reduce PVP in the world if you shut if you reduce logistics change. Making it less easy for them, basically, would be my summary of our design intent behind this. It's not that this system is going to be locked all day. People are free to destroy the, the sino jammers that are in the system. Um, whether that takes some cooperation with local forces or sending your own fleet out there is up to you. Uh, but yeah, Eden Cromer having to protect their soil, and part of that is securing up these, these systems where lots and lots of trade come through. To, for their own purposes. I know one low sex system that definitely did lose their uh, Sino Jammer. Um, and this was confirmed by Vili, like uh, TTT destroyed the uh, the Jammer that was in the, the recent, uh, recently, system that they, that they recently put a new keep star in called uh, Ignoiton in Synclazon. So that happened for sure. Yeah, I think that uh, it's really important to note that, you know, yes, these are not permanent structures. These are up there until players do something about it. And as such, uh, you're kind of communicating that you're going to be doing something about it. But most importantly, um, it gives other players the ability to uh, come in and enforce these disruptions. Uh, which was really kind of the, the, the point of the whole thing. We aren't going to say, you know, you know you can't do your thing. We're going to say, you, there's now something you have to do to do it, and there's now something this other guy can do to uh, try to keep you from it. Um, you know, kind of putting tools in the player's hands. It's almost like magnets for, for uh, player interaction, right? Yeah, exactly. So correct um, me if I'm wrong, but Nyarja is the blue a blue star system. So it's is it? Um, <laughs> is it we now? Don't but talk about. <laughs> what uh, what I noticed, and I picked up on this really early, is uh, there are certain groups that are bound and determined uh, to keep certain systems in between trade rep, trade hubs, uh, low sec, um, or a low, lower sec, uh, security status. Um, so my question is, what is, and this, if, uh, the permanence of fully, fully securing a system for either Edencom or Triglavian, will these systems constantly be in flux or is there a way, or is there a time where they will be permanently one way or the other? Uh, there's absolutely a time where there will be permanently one way or another for all intents and purposes. Ooh Interesting. Thank you. Interesting. I think people are looking at uh, Nijara like, uh, with uh, a lot of intent now. Niarja. Yeah. Sorry, Niarja. Yeah, sorry. My bad. It, it, um, 
I, I'm surprised that you guys could share something as definitive as that. I think it's pretty, pretty apparent that, uh, from everything we put out thus far that there are permanent changes. We're, we've been heavily leaning on that in the marketing that we've been putting out. Like, capsule reaction will have an effect and will shape New Eden. And saying that there will be permanent states for one of these is, is basically an aspect of that. So, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. I, I do want to say, though, that uh, just because something goes into uh, uh, low sec does not necessarily mean that it is stuck there immediately. Um, there are, there's a long period of time where it can be kicked back. Uh, well, depending on how players uh, uh, interact with things. But uh, yeah. So that's like another thing that both of us had a little chat about before um, before the stream. Um, that just because we've gone into first liminality or just because the system's gone into readout doesn't mean that it can't go the other way. So that's something to bear in mind. Nice. I guess kind of one of the one of the other kind of uh, things that a lot of people are wondering about is when it does get to that point of. Uh, permanence as it were um you know whether it's uh, whether it's increased or decreased in in whether it does increase at all in uh security status or whether it actually if it decreases in security status when it finally reaches that that level of permanence is it just going to be a concord presence change or is it going to be more of a uh true security status change or is that something that we're going to have to find out like you're going to have to find that out yeah you're just going to have to find that out might be the case <laughs> if you're flying through the system checking it out and you see these cool ships that you've never seen before like the triglavians had what looked to me like haulers and people in the fleet were saying oh oh we should get that as a, that would make a great like triglave or precursor deep space transport or precursor covert hauler or something. You know, we're looking at these things. Is there, is there any chance we're going to get any more ships out of this? I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> that's all throw that up on the screen, but. Uh... Okay. Yes, well, I think we, the we million know... dollar question is uh will we get zappy boys or not uh i have not stopped hearing any uh, anything about that since since the trailer uh debuted so i know you can't oh. say anything but that's what everyone is talking about it's all about the zappy boy <laughs> right it is a pretty awesome looking ship isn't it and you guys probably have a different slang term for it internally and zappy <laughs> we, we don't know <laughs> oh, so this isn't the zappy boy that i'm yeah. showing up right now but like these are the haulers but yeah zappy boy is in the trailer for sure yeah the, these haulers are what are in game now they're npc only who knows they may end up in players hands at some point or another obviously we can't even guess at that the the zappy boy is the ship that showed up in the trailer shown using a weapon that chained f to three separate ships uh that i mean as far as whether we get it or not, I'm pretty sure that that's, that's happening. But as far as uh, when it's this quadrant is all that we have. We do like, yeah. I like the design of those haulers. When, you know, whether, as to, as to when we actually potentially get access to uh, Zappy Boy and, and what Zappy Boy will actually be called. Um, the the actual name is going to trump Zappy Boy or not? I don't know. So if chapter three ends uh, this story about the Triglavian and the final result is Triglavian on the system, uh, does that mean the story really doesn't end? Will Triglavians be a standard part of factions that we do, we deal with after chapter three? Or after the chapter? There's more to come. The, the what you're seeing right now is is the first week of this uh, as it evolves over time we have a definite end point in our heads that we're not going to divulge anything about yeah and even when it comes to evergreen stuff uh the one thing i will say is that 
you know, this storyline is coming to an end, uh, but it's really just one thread in the blanket that is New Eden. So um, it, either they're going to completely remove themselves from existence in New Eden, or yes, they're going to remain somehow in uh, uh, in there in that overarching storyline. Um, but we we can't comment on exactly how or where or why or what. I also just want to clarify, like the the ship is being built by other developers. Like you guys are building the actual invasion content. That's not yours. Is, am I correct in that? No comment. I mean... <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know how best to phrase this question, but under the market categories for ships, uh, you you know you've got standard battleships, you got precursor battleships, and underneath that you got Triglavians. Are we going to get any other precursor factions besides Triglavians anytime soon or not soon? We, we've had a, a conversation about this disparity uh, internally. And at the moment, the Triglavians are precursor ships, but we want to message them as Triglavian ships because it's clearer for our newer players. Makes sense. Well, I, I had read some. I had read some uh, language earlier on that uh, indicated an intention to flesh out that line. So I don't. I don't know how that necessarily plays in with today's strategy. Well, uh, there's always intentions and conversations, but all I can speak about really is what we've we've committed to and what's on the table right now, which is the the Triglavians and what they're bringing with them. All right. Is there any? We have a little segment we like to do at the end of the show, which is our news segment. Is there anything our CCP guests would like to say before we move over to the news segment? Anything we didn't cover that you think oh, we should have covered that? Um, I guess I want to just say that I know that there's been an experiential gap that kind of blindsided us a little bit, or it certainly blindsided me, that um, we're hoping to remedy, like the instances where um, we've seen the stellar reconnaissance uh, go one way or the other, and then people are left wondering what's happened. Um, I plan we have plans to address this that we're um, moving with, but you know I'm not going to provide a a solid commit date other than very soon. Uh, it all depends on our own Turner processes and how quickly they move along. Uh, but I do want to highlight that we're, we're, we, we've got our ears to the ground on this and we're, we're very attentive with, you know, the progress in Raravos and the, the progress in all the Edencom fortress systems and how they led to that point. So yeah, we're, we're, we're not being hands off with this and I hope at least to solve what I think is the biggest experiential flaw with all of this, which is uh, these these failures, as as the the player base are calling them. So uh, that's that's the that's the piece that I want to get across, basically. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to you know make sure that everybody acknowledge or everybody recognizes that we acknowledge. You know, game design is an iterative pr uh, process. It's uh, a a process wherein we fail constantly that is the job and it's about figuring out you know what we do about those failures and how we address them um and you know as sledgehammer was just talking about we've we've definitely recognized that that is a uh that is a experiential failure in this and we are addressing it and uh hopefully that should be uh finished up soon um i also just want to you know let everybody know how how wonderful it's been watching all of this. Uh, the the team has been basically uh, having streams running nonstop, just watching what all of you guys are doing. Um, when Raravos flipped, we were all on stream or all watching diff uh, streams at like 1:30 in the morning, chatting in Slack, you know, cheering on the uh, final shift over uh, or not the final, but the shift over into uh, first liminality, um, watching. Uh, players take like you know ten minutes to fully grasp what had happened, um, and it was wonderful. 
Um, and we're really enjoying watching you all. And we're also taking notes about what is and is not working. We had, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, been, it's been truly humbling and frankly, basically the most incredible thing that I've ever witnessed <laughs> like unfold. It's, it's truly amazing. So thank you all for engaging like you have. I hope we can get it to a point where it's even better. I had some fun yeah, things about that. those engagements as well. Um, specifically when it when it did flip, uh, apparently there was uh, there there was certain situations, um, you know, shouted in local as to you know the gates have t- turned off, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and people freaked out about that and all that kind of stuff. Like obviously they they hadn't, but like it caused enough of a panic for people to walk off to those to various different gates, and that in turn actually caused. A bunch of additional kind of firefights going on in the rest of the system as well. Well, All there was, a, there was the first time that's ever happened, so it's to be expected that people were pretty confused, I guess. Yeah, but it's 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 cool how that's just emergent behavior, right? Yeah, absolutely, and it's always the it's always the humbling thing about developing for Eve is is the emergent player that comes from your, you guys. You know, there's things that we never expect. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite part of working on this game, um, because I, I I can probably write up 500 different possible things I expect the players to do, and they'll come up with at least 200 more. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much for helping us with this, uh, and please stick around for our news segment next and comment on the news items as they come up. Uh, and first item on the news, I think, uh, should be the CSM elections are kicking off. Can you, January, when does that actually turn on? When can people start voting? I believe it's either uh, tonight for, um, well, it's tomorrow for the European uh, uh, guys, uh, but it's either uh, tonight, Sunday, or Monday morning tomorrow. And I would encourage you all uh, to take a look at the candidates. Uh, they've worked so hard on their platforms, and they have a lot of. They're very uh, true in their intentions for for making uh, Eve the best game that they possibly can. Uh, do your research. Uh, each candidate is very open to uh, talking with you personally, either on Discord or in various uh, voice servers, and uh, fill out your ballot. And yeah be a part of that. It's an amazing experience. Uh, this is my first time running and it's been phenomenal with uh, what I've learned and how I've gotten to know uh, people who are so motivated to make Eve the best game that they possibly can. Nice. Yeah, please get out there and, and support your CSM candidates. They're they're invaluable to the dev teams at CCP uh, and they, they do make a difference. So get involved and support your CSN kind of. Can you, can you talk a little bit about how, how you guys have interacted with the members of the council before? Uh, you're muted, Sledge. You just- oh, I, my mouse was off screen, sorry. Um, yeah, admittedly for this feature, we our interaction with the CSN was quite limited with the development of this, specifically this chapter of the invasion. Um, we had a lot of discourse with them around chapter two in the Dreadnought site and the invasions leading up to that point. But because of the nature of this one, we, we don't want to we don't want to spill the beans, even if people are under NDA. It's not infallible. We have seen things come out from CSM summits that shouldn't have. Uh, I'm not saying that this CSM is better or worse for that than another CSM, but the team early on decided that we have to keep this pretty close to our chests. For better or worse, we'll see. Um, and if the CSM want to <laughs> call me out on this, they're more than welcome to. But we're, we, we stood by our decision to keep this uh, as secret as secretive as possible. Yeah. Uh, speaking to things that aren't Chapter 3, um, each of the CSM summits that I've managed to uh, to be there for, um, it's been really wonderful uh, seeing the back and forth, having them call us out on the stuff that they see us doing wrong, 
Um, but also, you know, uh, recently they've they've been giving us presentations about what they see as the state of their particular parts of Eve. Um, I think uh, Exoki was the first one to do that with uh, wormholes. Um, and you know, those have been really wonderful, not necessarily telling us what to do next, but giving us a really good idea of, you know, okay, so here's this content or this piece of the game. This is how uh, the player um, observation of it is. And that just gives us lots of information to make new things that uh, they, well, you all have never seen um, and give us a bit more of a idea of how that's gonna be received. Exciting. One of well, we're I, was, I was gonna say Go one of the other things that one of the other things about uh, uh, the upcoming CSM fifteen elections is uh, CCP uh, specifically CCP dopamine and a few other CCPs as well have been doing uh, interviews with uh, the CSM fifteen candidates on uh, CCP's Twitch channel as well. So if you are interested in kind of like actually hearing from particular CSM candidates in their own words, uh, you know, I would recommend you going and taking a look at that as well. All right, and next week, I am told that CCP is moving to new offices. And McLeod, can you get those pics up on the screen for us? Uh, have either of you been to Groska and seen the new office? Both of you, probably. No, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually been working from Groska. Uh, I oh. have, I'm one of the like four people that has been approved to be working from the offices because uh, it's a lot more conducive to work than my current home situation. So uh, yeah, I actually have the first Eve client running at Groska. Wow. Nice. Well, we, we uh, saw some of, uh, 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 we saw some beautiful pictures. They're from Lisa Siegfried Siegfried uh, and she was. Um, uh, they looked fun and exciting and gorgeous office. And we wanted to put some up on the screen for people. McLeod's running around trying to find them now. They're down below. I'm I'm getting them. Hang on. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So you know, uh, as. As circumstances permit in today's society, uh, people will get to come experience this new. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a bar right next to it that I see, you know, to go hang out at. Uh, but Maybe there's a bar down in the basement. Oh yeah, great, you got them up. And I don't know what what you're going to do about the monument. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to move or stay there. Or, and then and now there's two places to visit if you come to Iceland. For your Eve pilgrimage, this is off the top of my head, but I think it's coming. I think it's coming with us. But don't quote me on that. I think it's coming with us. Yeah, I've I've heard the rumor that we're moving it too. Um, but uh, you know, if you if you can see on the side of that particular uh, window on the right hand side, clearly someone really likes the harem. Well, one of the things that I realized uh, is uh, we've got two ships with the same hulls right next to each other, which is going to get super confusing when you're just looking at those big uh, printouts of the of, of the ships. <laughs> Very good point. At least for the meeting rooms, are they like the ship that the meeting rooms are named after? Oh, awesome. Yep. Very cool. I'm I'm a little bummed that uh, the Manticore one I think is somebody's office. Are we meeting in the Omen room or the uh, or the or the Zealot room? And which one is that? <laughs> Just don't don't meet in the Healer room or no one will ever find it. <laughs> Good we'll let you keep looking at the pictures for a moment. Well, we okay. talk about some more news segment items. Don't you don't have to go to these kill mails, but there were a few significant losses this this week in New Eden. Uh, someone lost a Tiamat, which is a fairly rare ship in Eve. Um, they, it died in Paragon Falls. I I personally wondered if it was the same Tiamat I had seen on 
uh, for sale recently in Jita. Uh, I didn't go back to my Jita alt and see if it was still there, but I just thought, it, you know, I saw TM, TM mods don't come up very often. So I saw one for sale and then saw one dead on the kill board. For anyone Does who's anyone curious, that? that ship was uh, an AT prize. Uh, it's a Triglavian class force recon. Force recons being near and dear to all of our hearts. At least out in Nelsec. Uh, Official. I would, don't know anything about that loss. Does anyone in the room know? Uh, and then there was an interesting guy who who lost three <laughs> um, of the Zernitra class Triglavian uh, dreadnoughts in the space of about, I don't know, four or five hours. He lost three of them, same guy. Uh, does anyone know about what was going on with that guy? No idea, but I feel really bad for him. <laughs> no, you feel bad on the first one. You just roll your eyes on the third one. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's still reasonably rare. <laughs> I mean, almost makes you wonder if maybe he just hated the Zernitra enough that he just wanted to throw a few away. You know, the first one is interesting, the second one is cringe, and the third one is just schadenfreude at that point. <laughs> As if the first no one problem. isn't. There was also a, a significant battle in Domain uh, that we could talk about for a moment. 463 pilots, 35 billion is gloss. I don't know if, um, oh yeah, you're, you may be getting it up on the... Uh, uh, Which one I was it? I see, I just um, linked it into the podcast channel. Ah, that, right, okay. Scenes chat channel we use in Discord to communicate. Uh, and uh, I think of Ashtarothi whenever I see Malevolent Row Industries um, on a kill board. Hi, Ash. Yeah, we're, we're out there. Yeah. And, and the, uh, uh, what was, do you, can you tell me the story of this, of this battle? I mean, of, of Raravas? Uh, this is happening in yeah. This was a the fight in Rar of us, I guess. Yeah, this is this, this is what's going on. And this is pe this is players fighting over the only liminal system so far. It has reached second liminality at this point. It is the first system to reach to progress at all beyond stellar reconnaissance and has been pushed to second liminality. They if they manage to push it to final liminality, it will be the first there as well. Okay, so this was not a specific battle. This was the, the Z kill board attempting to capture all the crazy activity going on around it in the system. Is that right? Yeah, for, it is a specific day. battle. It, it, is, it is. It may be a specific battle, or, you know, in that kind of situation, but like it definitely does not constitute the entire kind of uh, struggle that was Raravos, because uh, I do believe Raravos has been. Like there's been over one thousand, maybe even probably at this point over two thousand losses. It's, it's been going on for days. Yeah, easy. It's been it's been the dead. It's been the 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 system with the highest number of ship kills in Eve for the past few days. I believe. Well, I enjoyed my visit to it last night, so yeah, I can see why. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just uh, really quickly checking Dotland. Um, there's nearly, uh, I think, 2,000 kills in the last 24 hours alone. There were 6,000 between when it flipped in Losec to when I checked in the morning. <laughs> nice. Yep. All right. Yeah, well, uh, Dotland has it as 1,870 ships killed in the last 24 hours as the most violent system. And that beats out uh, Losec by three times. Uh, it beats out 
the highest null sec system by like four, maybe even five times, between four and five times. So yeah, it's 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 a very hot system. There's a lot of stuff going on there, and there's a very good reason why there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of action going on there. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for help with the news segment. Get your votes ready because uh, at downtime, the voting opens. Uh, thank you for joining us today for a conversation about spaceships. Uh, you are welcome to enjoy our uh, daily show as well, 1500 UTC, Monday through Friday. Madderall is doing that. Uh, uh, please watch more of our videos on youtube.com slash talking in stations. We have reorganized them into chapters to help you locate the subjects you're interested in. Thank you to the volunteers who did that. And again, please join our conversation on our Talking in Stations Discord. There should be a link somewhere nearby around talkinginstations.com so you can come in and chat with us. A big thank you to our supporters on Patreon, YouTube, and Twitch TV who make this happen. And that's all for this episode. Fly well.